All stores open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. Live from Bermuda Broadcasting, this is ZBN TV 9 News. Good evening, everyone. It's Wednesday, November the 8th. I'm Tarai Trot in for Jasmine Patterson, and thanks for joining us tonight. A lively town hall meeting underway tonight at BIU headquarters on the Domestic Partnerships draft bill, which threatens to end gay marriage. Former Attorney General Mark Pettingill, who helped to amend the Human Rights Act concerning sexual orientation and who was instrumental in getting the courts to approve gay marriage, tonight says government appears to be seeking extra support against same-sex marriage. Here's what he told us from New York. Well, I'm sure it comes as no surprise, Mike, to anybody that, you know, I, I don't think that this is the way to go. I think that, you know, this right um, that we fought very, very hard to have for people uh, uh, a valid human right that is now recognized in so many countries in the world, you know, has been a very significant step for Bermuda in the law. I appreciate and respect that, you know, not everybody agrees um, with this. And I certainly appreciate the views of the church. But, you know, the rights of the church are enshrined in the Constitution and in the Human Rights Act. Nobody is, is dampening down their rights. And, you know, I just have always felt like nobody can have ownership of a word, and the word being marriage. It, it means a lot to many people. Um, I think that, you know, the judgment of the court certainly set that out and all of the learning uh, in relation to uh, what marriage means um, as a union between, you know, human beings. So, you know, it's like a rose by any other name, Mike, just to come along now and say, okay, we're going we to we're gonna give these rights, but we want to call it by a different name. People already have these rights. People have already, already been married. And I think that that is the way that, uh, you know, we should move forward. I mean, leaving, leaving that aside, I, I, and I won't get into it now, but I certainly think that there are probably other legal issues that will arise with regard to what is proposed uh, anyway. Um, but, you know, I'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how uh, things go. It sounds to me like, you know, the government has decided to take the course because obviously they have a lot of supporters that have wanted uh, to have this change and that they are, you know, doing what government does in having to listen to um, what, you know, uh, a number of their supporters are, are saying. The town hall meeting got underway at 5.30, and we will have highlights on our major TV newscast tomorrow night. The so-called Paradise Papers have revealed offshore dealings of some of the world's richest people and companies that invest their money to avoid huge taxes. The recent leak of more than 13 million documents has forced reporters around the globe to ask the question again, is Bermuda and places like the Cayman Islands tax havens? Well, we took to the streets today to ask residents on the best way for Bermuda to respond to being labeled a tax haven. In my personal opinion, this stuff has been going along, going along for years. The 1% have found a way to, to legally protect their wealth. It's about, it's about um, tax avoidance and what you can do as an individual. So these things have been set up in trust and, and all these things were set up by the wealthy for years. So um, I think it's um, quite interesting. But I, I think we have a, a regulatory fra framework that um, speaks to, we're, we're very compliant and our Premier is doing a good job of, of making, that, making that known to the powers that be. Yeah. You think we're looking down the barrel of a gun with these Paradise Papers? I think so. Our public opinion will, will probably trump everything. Um, but um, that's all it is, public opinion. But um, I think we'll come out okay. I think that's ridiculous. It's, a, it's its own country. It has its own regulations. And it, it, it satisfies those re re regulations around the world with Sovereignty 2, for example. So I think it's a ridiculous comment. <laughs> I don't think it should be labeled as a tax haven. Um, we've done like this all these years, and I think we should continue as is. There is a lot of transparency around all the disclosures, and so, so I, I think this is mislabeled. Yeah, yeah. mislabeled. Paradise Papers. Yeah. Well, uh, it's a cyber hack, but, but I've read. Yeah. Um, 
So seems to be a lot of cyber hacking going on around the world. Uh, huh? Yeah, that's true. The former minister Bob Richards did a great job in presenting Bermuda's case uh, internationally, and the current finance minister, who is the premier, is doing an equal job. It would seem to me that every time he sits, both finance ministers sit in front of a foreign camera, they only have one concern. In spite of the fact that we have met every qualification that they deem to be necessary, when their own countries have not been able to jump as high as we have been. And so we have met what has been expected of us, and so the, it's obvious that uh, based on that, we're not a tax haven. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts on Appleby and Paradise Papers? Well, sign of the times, isn't it? That, that uh, people can get have access uh, to your information, and we get labeled, even though apparently it's from another island, that is somehow connected to Bermuda, it's most unfortunate. But the Premier has been very fast off the bat in spite of the criticism that perhaps he should have remained quiet. He can't win. Had he been quiet, they would have been demanding that he step forward and say something, that we're hiding something. But surely um, the world has seen that every time they come up with a new criteria, Bermuda makes every effort to meet that need. And they need to ask us some other questions, because there's so much going on in this country beyond just tax. The government tonight noting further reports today of a 2016 multi-site cyber attack on a globally headquartered law firm, including its offices here in Bermuda. A government spokesperson noting that much of the narrative concerns foreign nationals and other jurisdictions. The government takes the, these matters extremely seriously and is reviewing developments with all parties concerned, including the relevant international authorities. Bermuda consistently ranks as a global leader in tax transparency, with tax treaties with more than 100 governments. David Burt, the Minister of Finance and the Premier, says Bermuda maintains high vigilance on any and all criminal activities, including cyber, as well as requiring leading standards on tax and transparency of all who do business here. He adds government will not tolerate noncompliance in any of these areas, and they are reviewing this incident and related matters and will take any further action as required. Well, stay tuned. We have more news coming up after the break. Sears is Bermuda's largest home appliance store with over 200 appliances in our showroom. We have refrigerators and freezers, gas ovens and electric ranges, washers and dryers. Sears has a wide selection of craftsmen's tools and accessories. Beautify your home with our lawn and garden tools. We have everything you need for outdoor entertaining. Located at 41 Victoria Street, Sears is open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Sears, reliable delivery, quality service and everyday low prices. When you shop online, the cheapest, quickest, and easiest way to bring your packages into Bermuda is with U.S. Express at Mailboxes. I use them because I have a water sports business, and it's eat the um, just now and then when I need to get a few things from, um, you know, all for whatever, whatever company, Amazon or something. It's just such an easy connection with our mailboxes. The staff are fantastic. They call just to let me know that the package has arrived and I can come pick it up, and they're really good here. Sign up for a U.S. Express account at www.mailboxesunlimited.com today. Come first. Looking for a challenge? New adventures? Forge lifelong friendships? And earn an extra five to six thousand dollars a year? Good stuff. Be a part of a proud and honorable legacy of service to Royal Bermuda Regiment seeking volunteers. Let's go, guys! Call us at 238-1045 or visit BermudaRegiment.bm. The Royal Bermuda Regiment. Your regiment. Government's announcement that it is on track to bringing legislation to finally end the controversial practice of conscription receiving mixed reviews tonight. Many praising the government for keeping its election pledge and doing the right thing for human rights, while others not so enthusiastic about the future of the Royal Bermuda Regiment. But one family whose opposition to the practice that led to the announcement now continuing or rather now counting the days. 
The 1965 Defense Act, a law that allowed the state, through the governor, to force young men to serve in what was then the Bermuda Regiment under a system that is known as military conscription. Fast forward 41 years later, the year 2006, a group of soldiers, including athlete Lamont Marshall and Jamal Hardman, team up with Pastor Larry Marshall Sr. to form the human rights group Bermudians Against the Draft and do the unthinkable in the Bermudian landscape, challenge the legality of conscription. Despite numerous court battles and a campaign to change the perception of conscription in the court of public opinion, the battle continued all the way to the Privy Council in London in 2010, where the group lost their appeal. Fast forward to 2017, with the issue still lingering in the background, the new progressive Labour Party government, having promised to end the practice, appears to be making progress with the announcement Tuesday by the National Security Minister that the transition away from conscription is on track. The light at the end of the tunnel is shining brighter than ever. Bermuda should be celebrating because, first and foremost, this is a human rights issue. And this is not a victimless system. Mr. Marshall, particularly positive about the leadership of the Premier and the Minister for National Security on this issue. I commend Premier Burt for honoring his pre-election pledge. I commend the Minister of National Security, Mr. Van Keynes, for actually doing something, laying out a timetable. We have never been closer to getting rid of this system. But news of the new government will honor its election pledge to abolish conscription, a practice abolished by the mother country nearly 60 years ago, not being welcomed by everyone. Some people, a very small number, have doubted the regiment's effectiveness without conscription. They don't have the military expertise that a British, high-ranking British soldier has. He was brought in in 2000. And his number one recommendation was to abolish conscription. Mr. Marshall points to the regiment in the British overseas territory of Gibraltar as a shining example for the island. They went from a conscript army to one of volunteers. Some commentators online raising concern over the proposed pay for regiment soldiers post-conscription, estimated in the region of $65,000 annually, a figure they feel is too expensive for government. Really? Well, do they feel that our policemen are too expensive? Do they feel that our firemen are too expensive? See, because you, you cannot say that the regiment provides an inv invaluable service and then, on the other hand, state that it costs too much. Elsewhere, the impending abolition of the military draft, shaping up to be a bittersweet moment for the Marshall family who have had to endure great personal hardship in their battle. Yes, it has been a tremendous financial uh, cost. Right now, my family is struggling to pay off a $300,000 legal bill. Jamal has contributed considerably. My youngest son, Lamont, was arrested several times, despite the fact that he is a bona fide, conscientious objector. For now, Bermudians Against the Draft wait for change. And other news, Bermuda continues to see a strong visitor base from the traditional markets like the U.S. Northeast. However, the island continues to struggle to get a larger number of visitors from the U.K. The issue came up during the recent media briefing by Tourism Authority boss Kevin Dallas on third quarter visitor statistics. Mr. Dallas summed up the challenges over U.K. visitors this way. Uh, again, we continue to be up everywhere. Um, the UK remains one of our most challenging markets. Um, it, you know, it is far less relatively important to us uh, than the US, but it is a significant contributor of visitors. And of course, the London flight is important to the outbound market and the insurance market. Because of the high price of that UK flight, we continue to find that market challenging, but we are seeing, uh, we are seeing a little bit of growth there and we are, uh, we are trying some new and different things in the market there. So you will have seen that we just won an award for our out-of-home advertising in the UK, which was uh, actually back in January and February of this year.
And Mr. Dallas revealed discussions continue by the BTA and government to lure another airline to Bermuda from London to break the British Airways monopoly. We would certainly love to see uh, additional air capacity out of the UK. I think that you know, we can uh, negotiate with British Airways all we want, but really the thing that would move the needle on fare would be introducing competition. We see that in New York. We see that in Boston. Um, we continue to talk to uh, actually all the airlines, but in particular other airlines that fly out of London. Um, I, it, would be, it would be premature to say that any of those would bear fruit, but it continues to be a priority for us, and it is also a priority for, for Skyport. High pressure ensures fine conditions over the next couple of days or over at least tomorrow while a series of low, a series of low pressure systems transits to our north. Here's tonight's AccuWeather forecast. AccuWeather is presented by BFNM Insurance Group. We now go to AccuWeather headquarters. Good evening. Hopefully everybody had a nice day. It was beautiful out there today. This forecast is brought to you by the BF&M Insurance Group. And taking a look at our radar and satellite, we do see a front just to the north of the islands. Right now it's pretty quiet, but tonight and also tomorrow, we could see a few very brief showers in places because of that front. We're not really going to see any kind of showers uh, until later on in this week. So taking a look right now at our temperatures, 74 degrees, humidity 75%. The winds out of the west southwest from 8 to 12 knots. Water temperature getting a bit cooler, 77 degrees. Waves inside the reef 1 to 2 feet and outside 4 to 6 feet. So for tonight, it's going to be mainly cloudy with that front hanging nearby. And again, a very brief shower perhaps in some places. 71 degrees for our low. Tomorrow, it's going to be a mix of clouds and sunshine. And again, we could see a brief shower. Temperatures at 77 degrees. Our high time of uh, high tide the first one 11:58 tonight and then the second one at 12:29 in the afternoon tomorrow if you're traveling well we do have some forecasts for you take a look at toronto a wintry mix we are seeing snow and also some showers temperatures at 47 new york and boston pretty quiet here a mix of clouds and sun with temperatures in those low 50s in atlanta some showers 61 miami thunderstorms later on and in london 56 degrees staying dry with a mix of clouds and sunshine. Jamaica, here we could see some thunderstorms, especially in the evening hours. Barbados, Trinidad, some showers, temperatures in those 80s, and it's also pretty humid. Now, Friday, especially Friday night, that's when we could see an increase in showers as that front dips a lot closer to us. Saturday, that front will be passing through the island, so we'll see frequent showers on Saturday and also plenty of clouds. On Sunday, we will have improvement, although we could see some scattered showers left over, and also on Monday. Temperatures staying in those mid to upper 70s with the highest temperature reaching 77 degrees. Stay tuned to Ocean 89, Power 95, and Inspire 105 for all your latest news and weather. AccuWeather was presented by BFNM Insurance Group.
into savings all month long. Check out the great deals throughout our website. We have everything to create the living room of your dreams. Browse through our site to see the large selection in all price ranges. Entertain guests with the perfect dining set. We have something for all tastes and styles. Imagine falling asleep in your new bedroom. We have just what you're looking for. Don't wait. Call or stop in today and fall into savings all month long. Visit Bermuda's number one furniture store today. Big Savings Zone, South Sides and Davids. Christmas in Bermuda is a special time for most of us. Unfortunately, for some families in Bermuda, there is no warm Christmas. This year, many families will be in need. It's the 29th anniversary of the Lions Clubs of Bermuda and the Marketplace helping share the Christmas spirit, so let's help take care of each other. Shop at any Marketplace, Shopping Center, Modern Mart, or A1 stores and purchase extra tins and non-perishable items. Once you have purchased these items, place your food donations into Santa's bin located at the front of the store. The Lions Clubs will collect your food contributions and assemble them into hampers to be delivered to the families in need around the island. Christmas comes once a year. Help make it a special time for every family in Bermuda. Sponsored in part by the Bermuda Broadcasting Company and the Royal Gazette. Island Soul, where fashion meets comfort. Island Soul provides fashionable footwear hand-selected by our podiatrist that offers premium comfort. Located at 60 Victoria Street, Hamilton, Island Soul contains a friendly trained staff prepared to assist you with our vast selection of footwear, both male and female, with all sizes and widths available. Compression and travel socks, amongst other accessories, are also available in addition to a shoe modification and repair service, making Island Soul a one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. Yet another win for the Bermuda women's national hockey team in Jamaica. Girls football takes over Shelly Bay Field and Trey Simons finishes fourth in cross-country regional championships. Earl Bazin has the details and more in tonight's sports report. Bermuda's women's national hockey team are building with confidence as they picked up their second win in the CAC qualifiers in Jamaica earlier today with a 4-0 win over Panama. Maya Palacio and Iman Smith expressed their feelings for the game. I'm going to explain just the fact that we should have got more, really. I mean, we had our ones on, we just couldn't really connect with it in the last quarter, so I mean, it sucks for us because we should have dominated. Do you think right. Panama made any good changes in the next half of the game? Yeah, game? I think yeah. they surprised us. I mean, in the first half, we got a lot com really confident, very comfortable, and Panama came back, did some adjustments, put more passion on us, and I think it should in the last quarter, and I think they should be proud that they were able to keep us kneeling for the last three quarters. In a deal between Alwell Beach Tennis, Government, Gatorade, and Age Concern, a Bermuda Treasures free tennis program is set to launch. David Lambert from Alwell Beach Tennis Club explains how this came about. Listening to Dr. Fleming and some of the things that Age Concern is doing and, and uh, getting a feel for what some of our 65 and over is uh, experiencing, and we felt that to have a, a, a physical program uh, would be helpful. Minister of Sport Zane De Silva is happy with the concept of the program. I think it's a fantastic idea for our seniors um, because uh, we do encourage our youth all the time to, to uh, uh, make sure that they participate in some kind of activity um, because we know that uh, we have some some serious health concerns in Bermuda and uh, but it's great to see um, David and uh, the sponsors uh, looking to get keep our seniors active. Main sponsor Gatorade's local representative Paul Springs is grateful to be involved. I'm very proud to be representing uh, Gatorade and other fine products of PepsiCo including our Aquafina water and Ropey. It gives us a good opportunity to align ourselves with such a great cause. Claudette Fleming of Age Concern is excited that the seniors will have another function to help with healthier living. We, we can't do everything and so we appreciate when the community um, looks at the work that we do and considers how it can make a difference and we encourage as many people as possible to who qualify, who are um, old enough to qualify to call us on 238 Trey Simons finished fourth overall among some 117 runners, and Morehouse College grabbed 10th place in the NCAA South Regional Cross Country Championships. Simons would clock a time of 33.09. He would finish 37 seconds behind the overall winner. 
the Cedar Bridge Academy, scored three late goals to defeat Salters 3-0 in the Bermuda School Sports Federation's Senior School Girls 6 Side Football Tournament held at the Shelley Bay Field yesterday. Cedar Bridge got late goals from Trinae Edwards, Tia Lindo, and Michaela Robinson. Cedar Bridge went down early in their semifinal match against Warwick Academy, but responded with six unanswered goals to win comfortably. Salters got past Barkley Institute in the other semifinal 1-0. Bermuda High School Girls defeated Warwick Academy on penalties in the middle school final after the match finished tied at 1-1. BHS squeezed past Salters Grammar School in their semifinal 1-0, while Warwick overcame T.N. Tatum 3-2 in the other semifinal. Harrington Sound won the primary school championship on penalty kicks after a scoreless draw with Salters Grammar School. Salters won their semifinal over Warwick Academy, which also had a penalty shootout. Harrington Sound defeated St. David's Primary in the other semifinal 3-1. Madeline Moore and Emma Harvey competed in the ASA Southwest Regional Swimming Championships. Both Moore and Harvey took to the pool in the women's open age group division. During the women's 50-meter freestyle preliminaries, Moore touched the wall in a time of 26.59, which was the fastest time. During the final, Moore would once again clock a winning time of 26.33, which breaks the Bermuda record of 26.48. She set back on August 27, 2017, during the sixth FINA World Junior Championships. Harvey finished second in the women's 50-meter butterfly preliminaries, touching the wall in a time of 28.16, while Moore finished fourth with a time of 28.91. During the women's open 50-meter butterfly final, Harvey finished on top of the podium, clocking 28.06, while Moore finished fourth after recording a time of 28.87. In snooker action, Spanish Point Boat Club's number one team defeated Sands Boat Club number two team 4-1. to one. Ed Gomes and Tyler C. split a game each in the double frame matches, with Gomes taking the first game 47-37 and C. winning the second game 45-32. Paul Fadden won his game 82-8 and Chris Dawkins won his game 38-21. The doubles match winners were Stuart Greenslade and Fedden winning 52-40. In other matches, Warwick Workman's number two team defeated Sands Boat Club 4-1, to one, while what? Foot Sports Club defeated RAA Rebels 4 to 1. In Commercial League bowling action inside the work lanes, it saw the Braves defeat We Do It Big 4-0. Sweet Life defeated the Spinners 3-1, while the Pin Pushers defeated the Sunset 3-1. The BPS Blue Lanterns defeated BTC 3-1, while Cool Runnings defeated the Secret Weapons 3-1. Ten Pin Mafia got by the Superstars 3-1. I'm Earl Baisden with Bermuda Broadcasting Sports. Red potatoes, five pound bag, only four ninety nine. Fresh Purdue chicken thighs or drumsticks, only a dollar ninety nine per pound. Heinz ketchup, twenty ounce squeeze bottle, only three forty nine. All sizes, boys and girls huggies, pull ups, only fifteen ninety nine. Kellogg's corn pop cereal, twelve point five ounce box, just five seventy nine. All stores open Monday through Saturday, seven a.m. to ten p.m. and Sunday, nine a.m. to seven p.m. for your shopping convenience. Less than 25% of Bermudians have saved enough to enjoy retirement. Yes, it's easy to come up with excuses. Credit card debt, children's education, low wages. Although these things can put a strain on your budgets, they don't make it impossible to save. At Friesen Brook Meyer, we'll show you how. And it's never too late. Call us for a free, no obligation consultation today. Friesen Brook Meyer, covering possibilities. Restoration Fellowship presents its International Prophetic Encounter with this year's theme, Moving in Prophetic Faith. Conference located in Southampton, Bermuda, November 15th through the 19th. At the Fairmount Southampton Hotel. Conference hosted by Dr. Roxanne Haynes, Senior Pastor of Restoration Fellowship. With conference speakers, Bishop George Bloomer, Prophetess Judy Brown Jones, Bishop Vernon Lamb, and Dr. Roxanne Haynes. Register free online at www.rfbermuda.com. That's www.rfbermuda.com. 
After 12 years, the charity is housed number 25 Point Finger Road in Paget. The seniors' charity, Age Concern, is relocating. On Tuesday, November the 14th, Age Concern will join sponsoring partners Fort Knox in their office space at the central location of number 1 Burnaby Street in Hamilton on the corner of Church and Burnaby Streets. A possible risk with in vitro fertilization and which contraception may protect against cancer. Weijia Jang has a look at today's top health stories. A common form of contraception may offer protection against cervical cancer. Researchers from the University of Southern California found the incidence of cervical cancer was a third lower in women who use intrauterine devices, also known as IUDs. Cervical cancer is the third most common cancer in women worldwide. A new study finds the risk of premature birth is 80% higher among women who become pregnant through in vitro fertilization. Researchers in Italy say the way the placenta develops in IVF pregnancies may play a role. And brain scans of West Nile patients show evidence of neurological damage years after the original infection from the mosquito-borne virus. Researchers at Baylor College of Medicine say the damage appeared even in patients who experienced mild symptoms or no symptoms at all. That's a look at some of the day's top health stories. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, Washington. And that's our broadcast for this Wednesday night. I'm Tarai Trot. Thanks for spending your time with us. Have a good night.